Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, thank you guys for tuning in right now. It's Coach Cleek coming at you. I want to give a shout out to De Demond Buxton, former guest on the show, for the new intro. That is fire. He's gave me a couple other uh, uh, intros, and they're, they're fired right now. They're lit. We're, we're going to be doing a couple collaborations in the future, so be on the lookout for He's already uh, um, co-signed to help me out with some IT and some other things. I don't want to give him away on the current book that's being published right now. It'll soon be out. Uh, it's being published, of course, in the anniversary of March 4th, um, but it, it's going to drop very relatively soon. It's in the last 2% stages of it being completed. But thank you guys for joining in. I got a special guest in the lab. I do got to put some housekeeping rules out there. This is going to be an interactive live, of course. Um, so keep your questions and your comments coming in. Uh, I understand there's a lot of things going on right now, but keep them coming in and we will address them as we can, if not during the live itself. Uh, we will address them afterward. But first and foremost, is your motivational speaker, your empowerment coach, your author, and your favorite Vegas, favorite Vegas coach, Clee, coming at you. Thank you guys for tuning in. You're already on the Facebook page, most of you. Uh, if you haven't already done so, subscribe to the page, the Coach Clee page. We're also live right now on YouTube under the same name, uh, Coach Clee. So if you haven't already done so, don't do it now. Uh, check out the YouTube page and subscribe to it. We're also on Anchor. It's not live, but it will be uploaded by Anchor um, tomorrow. Uh, so if you're a podcast listener or you're in your car, make sure you download that app and subscribe to it. But I need to know what the energy levels are. I need to know what the energy levels are like. So if you had a good day today, I need you to put a one in the comment section. Put a one in the comment section if you had a good day today. And, you know, I don't believe in bad days. I like to call them character building days because you can learn from them. You can grow from them. They're necessary for growth. OK, so if you had a quote unquote bad day, I need you to put a two. Looks like a peace sign. Put a two in the comment section if you had a character building day. Put a two in the comment section if you had a character building day, and hopefully tomorrow's a better day for you. If you had what I had, I know I say this all the time, but I, I really enjoy going live. I really enjoy meeting new people and hearing their, their stories and, and doing wonderful things and being out in the community doing positive things. Uh, I got to sleep in a little bit. I got to take care of some things around the house. If you had what I had, I had an outstanding day. I need you to put a zero in that chumpy. Put a zero in the comment section if you had an outstanding day. It's kind of like this is a bubble, and you're right there in the middle of that bubble, and nothing can penetrate that bubble. I see a couple people are on. I see Demond's on. Thank you for tuning in. Kia had a good day today. Thank you for tuning in, Mr. Porter. Uh, he had a, a, a character building day. I hope tomorrow's a better day for you. I'm gonna put my I had an outstanding day. Let me put this comment here, right here, real quick. Uh, Demond had an outstanding day too. There's a couple other people. I, I can't see the name, so I'm sorry. Please forgive me if I can't, don't give you the shout out that you're looking for. Not all the names uh, pop up on this screen. I see Clayton Hall's on. He had a character building day as well. A lot of character building days uh, today. So hopefully tomorrow's a better day for you. And after you listen to this individual uh, um, who I'm going to introduce momentarily, hopefully uh, she inspires you to at least the, the, the rest of your day going into tomorrow is a better day for you. Kind of step out of your own way. All right. Uh, like I said, we're on Facebook, we're on LinkedIn, we're on YouTube, we're on um, um, Instagram. We're not on Instagram live. Uh oh, I see uh, Shauna. What's your, the weather was beautiful and we're amongst the land I'm li li of the living. She had an outstanding day. There we go. I appreciate that. That's positive. Former guest on the show. My rock's over there. I'm sorry. I'll grab it and show you. But my, the painted rock that she made is over there. It's, I, can't, I can't leave the camera, but I still have it. And it's one of the favorite pieces here in the house. Uh, I know you see it scrolling below. Workwithclean.com. That's the website. And on that website, you're going to see a bunch of wonderful things. First and foremost, like I said, March 4th is a motivational empowerment book on helping you find your own breakthrough. This is the book I wrote when I was at, at, at the kind when I thought I was at rock bottom. Uh, it's a couple of the two year anniversary of this book came out, of course, March 4th. Uh, uh, and it's March 4th because we're marching forth to go get our breakthrough. We talk about toxic people, toxic situation. We talk about courage. We talk about taking care of yourself. We talk about drinking water. So many wonderful things are in this book. So make sure you check out the website. Not right now at the end of this live. Check out the website and, and get your copy. All right. The second book, I see Clayton Hall. What's going on, cousin? How you doing today? The second book that's on the website is Clarence Stokes. Herb Thompson, Jason Brown, and myself wrote 25 of our favorite quotes and what they mean to us. No shade, all light. So it's over 100 quotes in this book with meaning. OK, so if you, chapter two is actually the best. It, it, you can tell everybody I said that, too, if you come across. Them. Most of them have been a uh, guest on the show uh, already. Um, last but definitely not least, this book came out in the middle of last year. We talked about grudges. Hashtag grudge. 
We talk about anger. We talk about mistakes. We talk about holding on to a grudge. Les Brown said it best. Holding on to a grudge is like holding on to a hot piece of coal and expecting the person that you're angry with to feel the effects when realistically you're holding yourself back and you're burning yourself. Sometimes you just need to let that thing go and start the healing process. That's on the website too. And then the lab, the collaboration book that all, all the former guests who were the brave souls from the uh, last year and the year before who decided to have their bio t done, it's in this book and it's going to drop this month. So be on the lookout for that. Right now, I'm going to switch again, switch gears. Let me go ahead and do this because Shayla is not in the lab today, but she did feel so compelled to pre-record her shout outs uh, for, for our sponsors. And then we are going to jump into the meat and potatoes. All right, stand by. There we go. Hey guys, it's Shayla with today's Shayla Showcase. First, we'll start with DJ Bliss. DJ Bliss can be contacted for your musical needs, big or small. He can take your party, corporate event, or reception to the next level. He also specializes in all music genres. Contact DJ Bliss on Facebook via his page called DJ Bliss, or you can send him an email, djbliss717 at aol.com. Moving on, we have a new sponsor. If you're interested in work from home opportunities, check out Image Hazar LLC through their Image Hazar virtual call center. They offer hours based, they offer home based, excuse me, work solutions that empower you to think outside of the cubicle. I love that quote. You can contact Kiana Palmer, Kiana Palmer, excuse me, CEO, and check out their website, imagesrllc.com. We will make sure we have all of the contact information for both of our sponsors at the top of this live when we're finished. Now I'll turn it back over to Coach Clay. Damon Buxton for those those look at that 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 video quality stuff. Damon Buxton and also got to give a shout out to Jay Moore who uh, updates the website uh, weekly and he is on top of it. And he does a tremendous job. But ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, thank you guys for tuning in. This is this is why you guys tuned in. This is the meat and potatoes of the show. The special guest I have right now, she's a mother. She's a motivator. She's an inspirer. She's a cafe co-owner. She's a realtor. She's an attorney. Ladies and gentlemen, she's a game changer. I want to introduce to you. Christina Thomas Esquire. Christina, how are you doing today? Let me unmute you. There we go. How are you? I'm doing well. How about you? I'm doing wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. I'm excited to have you on the show. Uh, I'm like, I know we talked a little bit off camera uh, uh, um, uh, uh, prior to the show. Uh, I saw one of your videos on LinkedIn and I was so motivated. Um, I was so inspired that I, I had to reach out to you and ask you to be on the show. And here we are today. Here we are. <laughs> I hope you're as excited as I am. I am. I am glad to be here. Good. I'm glad yeah. to have you. Can, you. can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yes. So, I mean, you named all the titles <laughs> <laughs> that I have. But, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I am... In, uh, I, I do practice real estate. I am a real estate agent. That is my job. Um, just like you said, I'm a mom. I'm a mom of two, and I am now seven months pregnant. So okay. we're expecting another one. So be great. Yes. Uh, so um, I, I have a lot of, I guess, so a lot of background. <laughs> um, I told you it's been a four year journey, uh, but pretty much, you know, I went to school, law school, graduated, mm -hmm. got a job. Um, it wasn't what I wanted to do. I felt compelled to leave. Uh, people, my family wasn't really for that, but yeah. I left anyway. And it's been four years since I left. And okay has been a complete journey. I believe that. That we will be getting into. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And so you said you left uh, four years ago uh, at being an attorney. What are you currently doing now? So I just work in the real estate space. So okay. that is that is my job. Mm -hmm. I help people buy, sell, and invest in real estate. 
And I do use, a, I mean, in every single transaction I've had to put my legal hat on. Uh. <laughs> it's, it's usually me threatening a lawsuit. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I still work in that manner. I just don't take on uh, any any cases, any outside cases. I help my clients and I advise them on what they should be doing and how to move uh, without having any legal obligations that we, we don't want to run into. Right. But other than that, I, I stay clear from handling cases. <laughs> gotcha. gotcha. If you clarified, uh, and I know I asked you before the cameras actually came on, but you're, you're, you were a civil attorney and not a criminal attorney as well. So it kind of goes hand in hand with being a realtor and knowing uh, civil law as well. That that way you could and can advise your clients on which direction to go, uh, who to reach out to, um, what things to look out for and things along those lines. Right, right. Yes. And that's the funny thing. I did want to, while I was in school, uh, I figured I needed to pick something of what I wanted to do because that's a whole story too. Uh, <laughs> I did not ever envision myself going to law school, but um, I went and mm -hmm. while I was there, I was like, okay, well, what, you know, if you come to law school, you become a lawyer. That's what you do. And that's what everybody was telling me. So I'm like, okay, the only thing that I like is criminal law. So it's funny that you mentioned that because that's what I wanted. Well, I thought I wanted to do. Okay. So involved in it. <laughs> <laughs> and you the Total different direction then after that, huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Let me ask you that. If say I was a client that came into your office or emailed you or or, or uh, went to your website and I wanted to buy, purchase a home, uh, what what kind of steps or what kind of advice would you give me right off the bat? So it really just depends on where people are, right? So mm -hmm. I've had it where I mean you've got clients whose credit is. It needs to be worked on. Uh, uh, we have it where people are coming in and they are first time home buyers, but they don't have a lot of a lot of money, you know. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to navigate that and figuring out, okay, what how can we do this of where we don't have to put I, I try to have it where my clients don't come out of pocket, you know, at, at all if we can do it. <laughs> so <laughs> nice. I'm, I'm looking at programs and how we can combine the two or three and see about doing this and what they can bring to the table and how we can do that. So it's, it's really just, um, strategizing. That's what, that's what I do. And that's one of my specialties. It's just in everything I strategize. It was the same thing in, in law, right? Uh -huh. So I analyze and I strategize. So when we <laughs> come in, it's really all my focus is on you and what you want. And I make sure that that comes, that comes true. Mm -hmm. uh, but I also include, and that's why I say I help people get out of their own way in real estate and in real life, mm -hmm. because it seems like I always, I always get clients who have other issues. So in it, it like, <laughs> it like layers. So we come in and we're discussing like everything as a whole and how it, um, affects their their journey to home ownership mm -hmm. and a lot of them lack the faith and lack the belief and have fears about purchasing their home and how they're going to do it and they're saying what ifs and what if and i'm like we don't speak that way here so <laughs> i give them yeah i give them i kind of homework on what to do and one of the things that i do talk to them about is just going home in writing down specifically exactly what you're looking for. Like, I don't want you to leave anything out. I want you to write every single thing down. And then I want you to pray. I want you to pray on it. I want mm -hmm. you to ask for it one time. One, once. <laughs> we, don't, we don't keep doing that. We're going to ask for it one time. And then we're going to end it in saying thank you. And then when you wake up every morning, I want you to spend at least five minutes going through that and just thanking God for it. Like, mm -hmm. oh, man, I'm so excited. I'm, you know, I thank you for providing this. I can't wait to be in my home. I know it's coming. I know the perfect home is coming for me, you know, and just feeling mm -hmm. that, uh, the, the, the feeling of walking into your home of me, giving you the keys of me, of you signing your papers, like envisioning that. So I just, <laughs> that works like, whew, if they do it, it works. So I've had, I've had a few clients that, 
have actually done it. And mm-hmm. every time that they say something negative or try to say something, well, I don't know, I'm, I'm going to be homeless. I had a client who was selling her house and wanted to buy a house at the same time, but she wanted in a specific neighborhood. She wanted like <laughs> the backyard to be like laid out. I mean, <laughs> I was just like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, you know. So she wanted all this stuff. So she's just like writing it down. I'm like, okay, all right, that's what you want. That's what we're going to get. And it was rough. And that's the thing. And I always preface them of just like, just, I want you to know that it's still going to be a, a journey. It's still a process, right? Mm-hmm. So just because you wrote it down, it doesn't mean like it's going to happen like this. Right. There are still things that you have to work through. There are still things that need to be changed and molded inside of you. And I don't know what that is, but usually it comes with a process. Mm-hmm. So it may be a little difficult, but I need you to focus on, on the vision. Right. I need you to focus there and don't get distracted. Mm -hmm. So a lot of twists and turns happened in our transaction. And she was like, I'm going to be homeless. I'm going to be homeless. I said, excuse me. (laughs) (laughs) We do not. No, you're not. Because if you keep talking like that, you are. But (laughs) when when I'm not doing that, we are not talking like that. You are not going to be homeless. You are going to find your house and you're going to, you know, and I'm speaking life into every, you know, area of her situation. And sure enough, we placed our home on the market. She got a contract on it. The next day we found that exact house that oh, wow. she was looking for in the exact neighborhood. <laughs> I think and, we're- yeah, we put a contract on that house. <laughs> so, you know, it was just a whole testament for her. And just, mm-hmm. I, I just was able to see how things happen and whether they're seemingly good or bad, you know, it's all it's all intertwined and working out for our good, just like the Bible says, right? So we can't sit there and say, oh, well, it's hiccups. And there's a lot of times that she said that, oh, that must mean that I'm not supposed to do, excuse me, look at your list. Look at your list and look at what you wrote down and look at what we got. Is there any question mm-hmm. that you shouldn't be in that house? Okay, so I don't want to hear that anymore. <laughs> so, so, you know, but, but that's how life is. So it's just that's- crazy how those two things, I mean, they just really intertwine and just how I'm able to carry the same things that I do, you know, whether it's speaking and motivating into mm-hmm. my day-to-day life and real estate. Absolutely, man. That was wonderful. And that was a great story, especially to, start to kick it off with, because uh, not only it, it, what, what you were saying, is it um, about real estate or, or changing someone's lot, life or getting them in the home that they want, but that's base, that's coaching one-on-one. That, yeah. that it, you you write it down, you set your goals or your plan or whatever word you want to use for it. You write it down and then you, you review it often and you con- constantly uh, confirm it inside your mind, get your subconscious working and mm-hmm. uh, the power of attraction and the power of positive thinking. It has to come to fruition. It, it has right. to. It all does. Even though, like she said, there may be hiccups or there may be moments where you start self-doubting and at that moment you have to recognize it and you have to uh, uh, r- eliminate that negative thought and immediately replace it with a positive thought or a, a thought that's on your list. You write, if something happens uh, magically, tr- uh, drastically when you write something down, it becomes like it's solidified in stone then. Exactly. And that's what I that's what I definitely focus on. I'm like, look, guys, and it's just that is life. That mm-hmm. is life. And just knowing that everything starts here is what you believe. It's not necessarily what you're seeing. And that's why I talk about that so many times in my videos. It's just like you 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 really need to understand that you're you're controlling this, you know? So whatever you're putting out, you're gonna get back. Like just exactly. <laughs> understanding that mm-hmm. and just living by that. So, yeah. And I like what you say. You you help people get out of their own way to actually uh, find out um, their goal or who they are. Uh, how, how did you come get into that mind frame or, or into that, that realm? So I've always been obsessed with purpose. Okay. I do not know. Well, I can't say I don't know where it came from. Obviously, Mm -hmm. it was placed inside of me, right? But it wasn't something that I just was like, oh, well, that's something that I'm going to pick up because it came so early. And uh, I was in middle school and I would just ask people, 
you know, do you think that you're, you're, you're in your purpose? Are you, are you doing what it is that you feel that you should be doing? Do you think God called you for this? And they're looking at me like I'm crazy, but (laughs) yeah, from a middle schooler, they're like, what do you know about this stuff? (laughs) Why are you asking me this? But that was something that for, for some reason I, I would just ask. And those were the questions that intrigued me. I really liked to know people on a deeper level. I'm, I'm not good with small talk. Uh-huh. Like I've never been. So the elevator stuff, <laughs> like, hey, how you doing? That's about like, it. Outside, you know? <laughs> but when it comes to like getting to know a person and just the questions that I ask, um, like I said, I'm very analytical, so I like mm-hmm. to dig deep. And and I always, I would always say, um, because I have been always fascinated with criminal, you know, law and and everything. So that's all the programs that I would watch. But my thing, I I I like that because I knew there was always a reason behind mm-hmm. what people did. People just don't. People aren't born a certain way, you know, of just where, oh, I'm automatically just the worst per- person in the world or whatever you want to say. That's not the case. It is learned behavior. And somehow, in some way, in some time, mm-hmm. that was programmed. And there's a reason behind everything. So that's where these questions will come from. Okay. And just asking people and the questions that I got, I wasn't satisfied with. <laughs> I, I, I never got a yes. I like, yes, I'm living in my purpose. I'm so excited. You know, I'm doing the thing that God called me to do. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm living in it. And it was just like, no, well, I feel like I should be doing X, but I'm doing Y. But, but look, I've got bills to pay. I've got kids to feed. I can't just be hopping around doing whatever, you know, (laughs) the the excuses are just like, there there were so many different things. Mm -hmm. And that was, that was the thing that intrigued me. It was just like, okay, these are grown people. And yet, you know, they can make their own decisions. They can do what they want to do. I can understand me because I can't do what I want to do, but (laughs) I thought grown ups could. Uh-huh. And you feel trapped and like, why is that? So that had led me down like a whole rabbit hole of just figuring out why people do the things that they do. And, and um, I studied psychology in school okay. and understanding how the mind works and, and how that works with behavior and why people make certain decisions. And, you know, mm-hmm. so that's where I'm at. <laughs> that's why I do what I do. Wow, all that coming from a middle school mind. That, that's crazy. And I understand too, as being a child, you're like, why can't you? If that's not what you're supposed to do, or that doesn't set your heart on fire, why, why don't you just stop and do something else? And, yeah. and when you pour into the adult and you realize, yes, I'm in a relationship. Yes, I have children. Yes, I have a car note. Yes, I have a, a mortgage to pay for. Yes, I have groceries. Yes, I need the security of X, Y, and Z. You start understanding why, okay, I can't just up and leave. Yeah, I, I, if you if you need to do it, you need to start preparing those steps and moving toward that direction. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I got hit with that. So that's when I was like, oh, I, I get why. <laughs> why they did this. I get why, I mean, cause if you ask me, you know, when I was at my previous job, why mm-hmm. are you doing a thing that you feel like you should be doing? I, I would say no. And that's the reason why I ended up leaving. It's just okay. like, I'm falling into the same trap. I'm thinking, you know, I'm here and I'm like, oh, I'm going to work my way up. And mm-hmm. what I, my soft, I guess my soft spot, everybody has one. <laughs> Mine was money. So, okay. um, and the reason why that was the case is because I've been shown a vision for my life. It was, I don't even, it's, it's been a long time. So mm-hmm. I was shown like the end, end result. And okay. I always say that hmm, it can be a, a gift and a curse, mm-hmm. right? So, and I say that I say that because it depends on how you take it and what you do with that. Uh, the gift could be where you see the you see the end goal and you're just like, yo, I know this is happening and I'm so excited about it and I don't care what comes my way or what mm-hmm. happens in between now and then. 
I've seen the then, so I'm good. I know that everything that's happening is just preparing me for that time. Right, that right. Was good. I didn't fall into that category. <laughs> I took it and was like, okay, so now every single, every at every single level and every single step, I was comparing it to like, okay, well, how is this going to get me here? You know, mm -hmm. I'm working at, you know, I'm Mar I'm doing Mary Kay. How in the world am I going to get there? Okay, that must mean that I got to work up into the Escalade and, then, you know, get the money to be able to match that. And then maybe, you know, and trying to connect the dots in every single place that I was at. And all that does is just hold you back because yeah. it doesn't, it's not your job to figure out the how, the what, the it, it, it's not your job. It's just your job to stay focused on the end goal, especially mm -hmm. if it's been revealed to you or if you, and you know, if it hasn't been revealed, I encourage you guys to, to tonight, <laughs> sit down and ask, like, oh, why am I here? You know, what am I supposed to be doing? Can you show me that? And it will be revealed. And just well, yeah. focus on that. So when when obstacles come, when trials come, when things aren't aren't going well and aren't matching up to to what you thought, you know, or where you thought you would be, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. You just keep going. So that held me back for a long time. <laughs> like right. I said, the your journey been a journey. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> So yeah, um, but that was my thing. It's just money, right? So I saw a big house. I saw the ability to be able to care for my parents. And I'm just like, well, you know, okay, I'm working at this job. I'm making $60,000. Like, what is that going to do? You know, and, mm -hmm. and it would just block. It would just block. Mm -hmm. And all, how I emphasize the process, that was a part of my process. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. my resistance made it harder for that process mm -hmm. and for my growth. So it is the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm like, no, 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 that's not, that's not what it looked like in my mind. Like I'm supposed to be here by now. And then you start comparing yourself to other people and that's yeah. a whole crap. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's a recipe for yeah. disaster. So. Yes, oh my gosh. So I'm like, yeah. So that was my, that was my soft spot is it, it, it was money and still sometimes it comes and tries to haunt me. And I'm like, wait, I got money, you know, <laughs> I'm just waiting for it to be positive. <laughs> it's coming. Yep. It's coming. <laughs> yep. It's on way. Shayla's yeah. on. She says she's had an outstanding day. Thank you for tuning in. Tag like a shot. I see Kathy Jones, our guest from last week. She tuned in and she was listening to you, to you uh, speak. She said, amen. Uh, I see Jamon's on, one of the board of directors as well, along with Shayla, and he had a good day today. Thank you guys for tuning in. If you yeah. Chime in with any questions that you may have. Absolutely. Absolutely. So when you saw your your uh, finished product or end game goal or the end result in your mind, uh, like you said, it motivated you, um, uh, or at least I'm assuming that if you saw where you're at now and where you knew you were going to be. But not knowing all the steps involved, uh, how necessary are the steps involved uh, for you to get there? Like, I, let's just say you don't want to go through them, but as you have gone through some of them and you look back, you realize they weren't that bad, and you actually enjoyed yourself going through the process. Oh, it's that very necessary. Mm -hmm. it's, it's extremely necessary um, because as I am looking back, and I've done it before. Um, because self-reflection is like, I do that all the time, <laughs> but looking back at things I, and my prayer now is just like, Lord, look, I don't want it unless I'm ready for it because mm -hmm. I see that if I would have gotten it when I wanted, wanted it or thought I should have it, oh my gosh, it would have been, it, it would have been a headache. I would have yeah. been over. It wouldn't have been peaceful. It wouldn't have matched mm -hmm. what my vision showed. And that's that's a, that's also the thing. It's like when you are presented with a vision, it's not just about the like material things and, and what you're doing. So a lot of people focus, and that's what, what I did, is focus on, oh, what I'm going to have and, and the career that I'm in. And it's like, okay, cool. I'm going to have this. I'm going to be rich. You know, I'm going to be this. And that's great. You also need to hone in on the feeling and who is that person that mm -hmm. is receiving these things. So mm -hmm. I totally bypassed who that person was because that mm -hmm. person wasn't who 
be at that point. <laughs> so, and she still isn't. So here's the reason why I don't have it. <laughs> so I really had to, to reel it on back and just say, okay, well, wait, I've been trying to get this money, get money, 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 and get to this thing when who I am doesn't match. Mm-hmm. So what happened is if I get there and I have this beautiful, you know, I have all these beautiful things and I come the way that I am, honey, you're just going to ruin it. So yeah. I'm like, and I don't want to do that, you know? So I had to start focusing more so on the person and I had to ask God, like, okay, can you reveal her to me? Mm-hmm. What is what is what would I be feeling? What is who is this person? Mm-hmm. What is she like? How does she move? I needed to ed- identify that. So when I started writing these things down, then I realized, oh, I got a lot of work to do. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. So I understand why it's being held, and I understand why because I I don't, and that's why now I'm I'm saying. You know, in my prayers, Lord, I don't want it unless it's I'm, I'm ready for it. Prepare me, you know, rip me open, <laughs> and, and mm-hmm. I want to know my weaknesses. I want to know where where I need growth, mm-hmm. and try me. Like I'm I'm ready. I'm ready for it. So it's just a a change of mindset that would not have come had all those things not happened. Right. Yeah. So I'm grateful. Wait. What how that resonates with me in, in, in my terms, uh, um, and, and you said it very uh, eloquently. Um, but it, I, I see it as I remember uh, me being in high school and me being a freshman and, and joining the, uh, the football team and lifting weights for the first time, and then seeing a senior or seeing the guys that went off to uh, college and then would come back for the summer camps and give speeches or whatever. And I saw how they were their statue and how they were built, and I'm like, oh my gosh! And just the the, the they've been lifting weights for maybe longer than I have or they started at that same age I was at that time uh, yeah. and seeing the end result where they're able to bench press 300 pounds easy, where I know I can get there, but yeah. at the moment in time, there's no need for me to get under a bench press and try and bench press 300 pounds. Cause it wasn't going to happen. I was probably going to kill myself and cave my chest in and, and all yeah. that. Other <laughs> But I knew that there was a process on having to get there. Eventually, you start with the bar and you add weight and then you continue to add weight until you get that resistance. You build that muscle to get to where that desired goal is so you can have, be physically fit to play the sport that you're looking for. And that's that, yeah. that's how that resonated with me. Oh, yeah. And that's definitely. And, and I would have been the one who had been like, OK, well, when everybody leaves, I'm going to try this 300 real quick. <laughs> See if I can get there. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> oh, let me not. <laughs> so yeah, that was me in, in mm-hmm. rushing the process and just I, I hated that word. Just like the process is a process. What you mean? <laughs> I did the process. How many how long is this process? No. No. It, it makes me uh think of just like the Israelites in the wilderness and how that mm-hmm. that 11, 11 day journey turned into 40 years, right? Yeah. And it's funny because when I quit my job, I was like, "Oh, I, that would—that is not going to be me. I'm not going to do that. You know, and I'm just running away from that. Like, no, I'm, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to extend it, and I'm not going to do that. But just not really paying attention to why it was extended mm-hmm. <laughs> and why that happened. So, I have got my weapons. <laughs> I've, I've, <laughs> I've learned. <laughs> Patience. Kathy Jones has a comment here. She she also uh, she also agrees. She said she doesn't want anything that doesn't belong to her, even if it, she doesn't want anything that doesn't belong to me. And even if it does belong to me, I don't want it until God says it's time. Yep. That is that is exactly right. Mm-hmm. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. It may <laughs> look good, but I've seen a lot of people get things that look good and mm-hmm. they weren't ready for them. And it doesn't end well. Yeah. Yep. Well, let me ask you a, a question here. Um, mm-hmm. Let's say that you had the ability to talk to your younger self. Maybe you could go back five, ten, maybe fifteen years, and the, the you, the, the right now version of you, could go back and talk to the the uh, ten year ago version of you. What kind of advice would you give yourself? So. Um, Basically everything that I've <laughs> I've learned, I'm just my, my big things is just rushing, rushing to get 
to to where I thought that I would want to be or where I should be and worrying about how things were going to work out. That was a big thing for me too. It's just like, okay, I don't understand how am I going to get here and what am I going to do about this and what am I going to do about that? And oh my gosh, and just figure it, trying to figure out the how. That's right. where my mind was rather than focusing on, you know, what it what I'm going for. Mm -hmm. uh, so connecting the dots or just robbing myself of peace. <laughs> that's pretty much what I would say, because that's all it's doing. Mm -hmm. And having myself of being in the moment. So even, um, what was it, just the, just uh, maybe a couple of days ago, I was walking my dog and I hit the um, the top of our street. And I was mm -hmm. just like, yeah, some, uh, you know, some, uh, it was a thought that just popped up. It's just like, you're going to miss this neighborhood one day, you know? Oh. And it's, it struck me because I'm like, you know what? Well, you're right. You're right. And and that's the thing is when you get stuck in your current situation and you're not mm -hmm. focused on the future mm -hmm. and you get stuck in it and you think that this is this isn't I mean, it's called a current situation for a, a reason because it's current, like it's going to pass. So. Mm -hmm you think that this is the end and it's like, oh, this isn't matching where I, where I was. And oh, man, you know, oh my gosh, what if I fail? What if I do this? What if this happens? And what if that, you aren't able to enjoy the moment. You aren't able to see all the blessings that have happened. So, I mean, so far and, and what you're living in and how you're, you know, how pro provision has been happening. And that's one of the things that I had to, to realize. And now every morning I'm like, look, Oh my gosh, for four years, like, you know, and let me say this four years, like we have talked about four years have been up, down, all around. And I yeah, because I'm still, I was still learning and trying to figure out. And so I'm jumping from this and jumping to that and trying to hurry up and get the money. And mm -hmm. I was like, oh no, sit down. Okay. All right. Come on. Let's try this. No, sit down. You know, so <laughs> it's been like this. But through it all, like I'm telling you, I have not we're better off than when I was at my job. Like, oh. it's crazy to me. I've just, it, it's crazy. <laughs> mm -hmm. So just being able to, to step back and say, you know what, look, this is a temporary situation, but I'm so thankful for this temporary situation because you're, you're holding me down. You're mm -hmm. holding my family down. You mm -hmm. have literally, like, um, 2000, it was 2019 in mm -hmm. November. I was told to stop marketing. And I'm like, well, would you stop marketing? And how am I supposed to get people? You know, <laughs> that's kind of like my business. You know, if I don't market and people don't know what I'm doing, then I'm not going to get anybody. Whoa, yeah. Huh? I said that, yeah, that would be messing up the whole flow. Yeah, I'm like, I had, are, you serious? are you sure about this? You know, so I got confirmation. I'm like, all right, well, then fine. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to stop marketing. But that was still where I was. You know, I was like, oh, uh oh, what about this money? You know, <laughs> so that's all exactly what comes in my head. And I'm like, uh, all right, all right. You know, you said you're going to provide. You you said you're going to bring the people to me. Fine. All right. He's going to bring the people to me. And then here we go. You know, um, January, February happened. And I was mm -hmm. like, so where are the people at? <laughs> you know, so I'm like, no people, and then the pandemic happened. And I was like, about to ask you, that's right on that line. Yeah, I'm like, are you kidding me? You know, I remember even looking at um, in our uh, account, and I was like, oh my gosh, because I had journaled about it. It was like, look, we only had it was where we had used up, you know, most of the stuff that we had, um, and we had like a couple hundred dollars in our account. And I was like, um, okay, <laughs> how is this going to work? Like, I, we've got this to pay for, we've got this to pay for, and nobody's coming. I had 13 clients lined up in the beginning of the year. Every single one got wiped out. Yeah. Once yeah. that happened, I'm like, <laughs> yeah. so where, where's the money going to come from? And um. I, I just didn't know, right? But I was like, okay, I can't, I can't focus on that. I can't focus on what's happening. I can't focus on the bank account because I was checking it every five seconds. Like, those auto drafts. I'm like, oh my gosh. 
oh my goodness, like, are we going to have enough to cover it? Like, what's happening right now? And I'm like, and then the thing is, another one of my soft spots was, uh, uh, is enough, right? So I would always question whether I'm doing enough. And once you peel back the layers to that, right, you just keep asking questions, you keep digging, digging deeper. And that's what I did. It realized, I realized that it, it stemmed from me not believing that I am enough. So <laughs> I thought that works, we're going to do it. So I'm like a hamster on a wheel, like trying to, God, are you proud of me? Am I doing enough? Are you sure I'm doing enough? You know? Um, so that wasn't, sorry. Uh, that wasn't, that, that wasn't good. But um, I was, I was really worried about that. So that triggered, so the money was triggered. And then also the enough, you know, doing enough was triggered. Yeah. I'm sitting here like, I can't even complain to anybody because <laughs> they're going to be like, well, what are you doing? Nothing. Like, <laughs> I'm just yeah. waiting for people to come. Like, that doesn't even make any sense. Like, there's, there's nobody that you could just tell and they would, it's like, you're, you're hurt. You know, you need money, but yet you're not calling, not you're, not, you're, not getting, yeah. you're not doing anything to bring people in. That, that makes no sense. So I just, whoop, I ain't saying anything. So it was just my husband and I that just knew. He's like, you know, it's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. God's going to provide. He always has had more faith than me. So he's the one that I've been looking up to. <laughs> it's just like, okay, all right. So what I did was just like, okay, you know what? I need to get, I need to get my mind off of this. I need to get my mind off of this. So I am going to write down what I want this, you know, by the end of this year, what I want. And that's what I'm going to do. I don't know how in the world this is going to happen. You know, so I had, you know, I want the credit cards paid off. I want to have $18,000 in our um, bank account that we don't even need. I mm -hmm. want to be able to have, you know, an investment account that has mm -hmm. at least, you know, X amount of dollars. And I want to have it where my, my, our kids have this amount in their savings account. Plus mm -hmm. they have an investment account. And I want mm -hmm. to do, you know, I'm just writing down this stuff. I'm like, well, I don't know how that's going to happen, but I am just going to do that. And that's what I'm going to focus on. Sure enough, by the end of the year, every single thing was checked off. Okay. <laughs> so, Congratulations. Yeah. So just, and I, that just put me in a totally different, you know, I'm still not marketing, right? I'm okay. still not doing anything uh, of where I'm actually going out and seeking clients, but I'm getting so many calls. All of a sudden, I'm getting a call. Oh, hey, um, my cousin referred me to you. I already have a house picked out. I have not, like, let me tell you this. <laughs> all last year, oh, uh -huh. all last year, I did not go out and see a house, but so sold. Yeah, the, 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 the ready-made the ready clients coming at you. Yes. That's, that's, that's <laughs> an easy way. <laughs> so I'm just like, and it did not start because, you know, March and April, we were shut down. So yeah. then around May-ish, it started to open up, but really it didn't start getting, you know, anywhere until June. So you're talking about it's halfway through the year and I haven't received anything. And I'm like, well, it's going to get done though. It's going to get done. And sure enough, it did. So, and that was the, 2020 was my biggest year. Wow. So, you know, I, I so you like during the pandemic. Yeah. Yes. So that's that that was necessary. That's what I'm like. This process is necessary. It's not this is causing me to be able to see all this stuff happen mm -hmm. and seeing the growth and and OK, I have live examples of what happens when you just give it. Mm -hmm. And you can say, okay, well, look, I trust you. I, I'm i believing in you. And I, I, I'm i excited about what it is that you have for me because I know that you have something for me because you created me. You created me and you, you lit this desire in mm -hmm. my soul, you know? Mm -hmm. So I know that it's not been, it hasn't been placed there for no reason. 
Exactly. You did this. So if you did that and that you you called me for this thing, then mm -hmm. guess what's happening? You're equipping me for this thing. There is no way that I can lose. I've got to keep going. I know that vision is happening. Like it's you know, and that's how you get excited about it. No matter what is going on, you can be on. You know, I, you can lose your house. You can be a foreclosure. You can be this. You can be that. Whatever else is happening, but you know, no, God, God got me. Mm -hmm. I'm good. Like, mm -hmm. I haven't seen it. I feel it. I know it. And it's it's all right. There we go. Hey, you do the thing and you get the power. I like that. You got to feel it and, and, and believe it. And that stepping out on faith is important. I see yes. Jamal has a comment. Um, he's, Sometimes we rush to where we want to be and prolong getting to the destination where God wants us to be or has destined us to be. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that rushing. Move things along. Mm -hmm. I want immediate satisfaction. Just like I want to see this thing happening. I want to make sure that I am on the right path. And that, that slows a lot of people down too. Of just I want to make sure that things are and, and I use that excuse too of just like, no, I want to make sure that I'm 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 definitely in God's will, right? I mm -hmm. want to make sure that I'm I'm on the right path. So every five seconds I would be checking in. Okay, I'm doing this right, right? I'm, I'm on the right path, right? You know, and what that really is, is doubt. And where it's coming from is you, it's like, I want things to be perfect. So then it makes sure, like in our head, if I'm on, you know, I'm on the path of God and I know that I'm doing things right, then it won't hurt as bad if something happens. Mm -hmm. And maybe less will happen if I'm doing things, you know, right. And it's kind of like the perfect situation. And there is no perfect. There's mm -hmm. no perfect situation, right? So if that's the case, you wouldn't have faith. So yeah. there's something that's been revealed and you just being close and cultivating that relationship with God. And that's another thing that 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 kind of gets sometimes brushed under the rug of just the relationship, not just I'm just going to pray, I'm going to read, and I'm going to go about my day. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to figure the rest out. That's not what it is. And I had to compare that to me and my husband. I mm -hmm. just like when we first started talking, right? And getting to know each other and how we cultivated our relationship. We talked all the time. Like he was always involved in my day. Like, hey, you know, this is what happened. This mm -hmm. is blah, 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 blah. Do you talk to God like that? You know, hey, God, like sometimes, you know, I'm having, I'm having breakfast and lunch with God. Just like, look, this is what's happening. You know, I'm kind of <laughs> kind of worried about this, but I know you got me, right? So it doesn't necessarily have to be where I'm always breaking out my Bible and it's a, it's a formal thing. Like you're, mm -hmm. you're involved in my day and we have a relationship. And I, and I trust that if I was going in the wrong way, you would tap me on the shoulder and say, hey, Christina. We need to go to the show. <laughs> come on, come on. So we're too far. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, like wait a minute. And just place certain things. Um, I guess in, in us as far as our feelings and our emotions to let us know if we're going, you know, <laughs> in the wrong direction. And what I was always doing is is I wanted to sign from him, just like, okay, give me a sign, give me a sign, give me a sign. He's like, look. I already provided you, you know, I told you what it is and I provided you the guidepost of your emotions and your feelings to let you know if you're going in the wrong direction. So if you're thinking wrong, guess what mm -hmm. you're going to be feeling like? You're not going to be feeling happy. You're not going to be feeling joyful. You're not going to be feeling peace. All of the things that I, I promised that you would have. So right. now I use that and it helps. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. There we go. So let me ask you another question. Uh, um, like I told you before, uh, I think I said it off camera. I, I coached uh, football, uh, uh, Little League football for a number of years. And um, a lot of the kids uh, watch the replay. Uh, and, and some of the kids uh, uh, like to guess. Some of them don't for various reasons. They're between the ages of, uh, I believe, seventh grade and seniors now. Um, mm, okay. 
because they at the time they were young, but they're of course they're they've got gotten older and stuff. And a lot of them, uh, they do like to guess, or they're they're they they like the fact that um uh not sports is being pushed on them, but um some some sort of professional uh, is being uh, uh admonished on them, uh mm -hmm. and. And they look at them and they ask questions or they ask me questions that they wish they could have asked. Uh, but they let's just say that, that there's a 12 year old right now that's behind our camera that's watching this and they're looking at you. and They never heard of you. Uh, they don't know. They didn't know who you are until they watched this video. And they're looking at you in amazement and saying, you know, what? I want to grow up and I want to be just like her. I want I want to think like her. I want to do things like her. What kind of advice would you give them? The kind of advice that I would give is to really put blinders on. Mm. Um, and that's what I had to tell myself. I, I actually wrote that the other day. I was just like, you've, you've got to be so in tune and so focused with what it is that you want to come to fruition, mm. right? And that vision that you've, you've, God has given to you uh -huh. You don't care what else is going on around you. You're like this. Mm -hmm. I'm not looking to my right. I'm not looking to my left and worrying about where other people are in their journeys because that's exactly what's happening. Everybody has their own journeys. Everybody's been called for something different. So mm -hmm. I cannot turn around and compare myself to you because you're not you're not you're not doing what I'm doing, even if I'm looking at another speaker, right? And I'm like, oh, well, she's, wow, she speaks way better than I do. You know, oh, I don't know. Will I ever get to that level or whatever it is? Guess what? They have been people that are assigned to me. Mm -hmm. And that's what I would tell them. There's people that have been assigned to you. And that's my thing. I'm just trying to get people to see that. I'm just like, it doesn't matter who is in your same lane. Do you know how many people make bread? Who cares? You know, <laughs> they didn't say, oh, well. <laughs> Too many people making bread. I guess I'm guess I'm gonna stop. <laughs> no, they still did it. And we've got multiple businesses who are doing kind of the same thing. And it 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 doesn't matter. What is for you is for you. And if you step out on that, and you that's why I'm like the relationship is really important. So mm -hmm. once you that's what I would I, I would really hone that in and 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 really get them to understand. Like first. Don't just step out and just be like, okay, well, this is what I feel I should be doing, and I'm just gonna go ahead and just do it. Um, I'm here. <laughs> yeah, like, okay, well, that's what I'm gonna. I, I did that for so long. My goodness, you'll just keep doing this. You will just yeah. keep in, in the same place until you figure that out. That wait, I'm not here to do it by myself. Mm -hmm. You can try, <laughs> and it will be difficult, but. <laughs> If you really tie into that relationship and 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 just say, look, God, you made me, you created me, you know me better than I know myself. So mm -hmm. I'm giving myself to you and I'm just allowing you to just guide me, guide me where you want me to be. Who are the people that are waiting for me? And when you get that vision, it's just like, no, I'm not, I'm not doubting. I'm not mm -hmm. fearful. Why are you fearful? He gave it to you. If he gave it to you, he created you for that specific purpose. You cannot lose. <laughs> like no matter what you do, if you just keep walking, you will get there. So mm -hmm. you've got to understand that the, the power of vision is just so incredibly important. Mm -hmm. So it's one, the relationship, two, keeping focused and, and avoiding the comparison trap. Mm -hmm. And then Lord, submerge yourself in as much positive energy that you can. So um, one of the things that I had listened to, what was it? It was Miles Monroe. And I've heard this multiple times, right? And everybody says, oh, you're the sum of the people that you hang around. You know, five people, you're the sum of it, and blah, blah, blah. Right. And that's always like in business conversations. And it's usually always centered around money. So my thing was like, I'm trying to just get to know, you know, they're like, well, you got to get, if you want to be a millionaire, get to know a millionaire. And I'm like, that sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want people to just be hanging around me because I have money. So, I, I know. Like, what yeah. are you doing? Yeah, I'm not, let's go out for tea. <laughs> yeah, I'm just here because you got money. That's all. I, I just want to know how to get it. <laughs> That's how I get it. We ain't friends no more. Right, right. So that's what I was like. That always deterred me from just like, I don't, 
I don't want to do that. So I never really sought that out. But when he said it, for some reason, it just clicked. And it's like, no, you are trying to better yourself. Mm -hmm. You see the end goal. So if I see that I'm going to be speaking, and that's one of the things that I've seen, right? I'm going to be speaking on stage. And I had asked myself that. Uh, because fear was standing on the, in the way. But if I see myself every time I close my eyes and I say, what do you really want to do? Lord, what is it that you really have for me? And I always see myself with a microphone in my hand and I'm speaking on stages. Guess what I should be doing right now? I should be using every moment that I can to speak, to use that, to better myself, to fail now rather than fail later, rather, you know, and to prepare. That's a part of faith. Of just like, I know this is happening and this is going to happen. So I'm preparing myself for what you promised me. Mm -hmm. So that thing of just getting around people who, you know, if it is speaking, if it is teaching, if it's, you know, being a doctor, if it's whatever, getting around those people. Because it's like, look, I want to be the best. So I'm surrounding myself with the best. You are the best. So I want to learn from you. Not necessarily you're a millionaire, you know, and I just want to suck up your money and, and learn the strategies and how to do that. But like, no. And then even if you are, you know, I want to seek out a business person and they are, you know, they are a millionaire or a billionaire or whatever it is. Guess what? I'm not just there just because of that. Mm -hmm. I want to know how you handle your money because you know what? I know I'm going to have money too. Mm -hmm. And I want to make sure that I handle it like you. Yeah, so okay. I, I understand that. So to really seeking out those people. And if you can't seek out those people, guess what? You got books. And that's for me. It's just like some some of the stuff that I'm looking for, I haven't quite found. And, you know, some people or whatever it is. So I'm I'm reading or I haven't been able to, you know, reach out to them. I can't just call up Michael Singer. Just be like, hey, can we hang <laughs> out? So I'm reading his books, you know. So. Mm -hmm. It's that's that's what it is. So submerge yourself in in positivity and just listen to YouTube videos, listen to you know speakers, listen to I mean read books, do audio books, whatever it is. But whatever you need to stay in that bubble of just mm -hmm. like <laughs> I need to be refueled, and I've got to cut out the noise. So whatever you can do to cut out the noise and just put those blinders on, do it. Exactly. Good answer. Good answer. And I see uh, Jade Gibbons. Uh, she she chimed in uh, from YouTube. She said this is very inspirational and she needs to start working on her list and getting her prayers in order. Uh, be on the lookout yeah. for her. She's going to be a future guest on the show. Uh, we haven't established a date yet, but she, she's on the way. Yeah. But exactly. <laughs> I know. I'm, I'm excited, too. I'm excited, too. But I want to I, talk I, about that list. Huh? <laughs> yeah, I want to show you what her list is. Yes. Like, wait a minute. Where, where's that list? <laughs> Don't just type it in the comments and not actually do it. Yeah. You got to do it. No, we, yeah. we call it. <laughs> yes. So let me, you touched on some things as well. Um, uh, reading books and uh, reading books is a passion of mine as well, because there's, uh, I, I don't know Stephen Covey. Uh, uh -huh. I don't know Norman Vincent Peale. I don't know uh, 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 Dale, uh, um, Carnegie, yeah, Carnegie, I don't know any of those. Uh, uh, but reading their books, uh, Dennis Kimbrough, uh, um, George Frazier, um, Lewis, um, I can't think of his last name, the uh, first uh, million business mil millionaire guy, billionaire guy. Uh huh. Um, but reading their books, learning how they how they moved, how their traits. I, I of course I, I haven't sit that, sat down and had an interview with them yet, the ones that are still here. Um, but mm -hmm. that's one of my goals to do so. But you can learn how they came up through the struggle as well. And I talk about reading books all the time uh, with oh, yeah. when I was coaching. But is there a book or a person or an individual story that influenced you or was a game changer for you that you could share with us? Um. Unfortunately, I can't say that it was one. So, okay. I, I, trust me, I tried to be that person, right? Because I would always <laughs> read stuff and it would just be like people would say, oh, so and so inspired me so much. And then all of a sudden their life changed, right? Or this right. book inspired me so much. And then all of a sudden their life changed. Or my mentor, yeah, no, I maybe because I'm hard headed and I'm very stubborn. <laughs> so, so I, it would be like I would devour books, right? <laughs> uh, I said, at least I know who you are. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. By this time, I know, I know who I am. So, 
I would devour books and just be like, so I'm waiting for the light bulb to click, you know, and for me to be a different person. And it didn't work. And so I just was like, well, this isn't, you know, at first, like, uh, okay, what's the point? You know, I'm just reading this stuff and it's not really sinking in and whatever. But I ended up just, just keep going, right? It's a process, right? As I say for everything now, it's a process. Mm -hmm. So um, I just kept reading. But what I had to, the analytical mind turned on, right? And mm -hmm. my thing was like, wait, 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 hold up. If I'm reading these things, I'm reading these things in, in the Bible. I'm hearing what God has to say. But then I'm reading these other things. And, it, and it's matching up. And all these people are saying similar things. You see, most people talk about the same exact stuff. They just say it in a different way, right? Exactly. It's the same mm -hmm. stuff over mm -hmm. and over and over again. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, if all these people are talking about this, it must be true. <laughs> like, well, it must be true. But it didn't start really like clicking until I started implementing what mm -hmm. I was reading. And that's that's one of the big things is just I was just reading, right? Just to just to read. And again, the am I doing enough, right? I gotta check it off my list. Uh, I read a book a week, you know. <laughs> Woo, yes. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna be at that millionaire status, like other people are saying, because millionaires saying they read a book a week. So that means I got to. That yeah. no, <laughs> it's like no, it doesn't do anything for you if you aren't absorbing that, if you're not implementing what it's saying, and you're not consciously using that on a day to day basis. So, I have like a couple of books that kind of just got the wheels kind of turning. But my my books, I usually stay at this point right now. I've been told to kind of just stay in the the lane of mindset and personal development. And mm -hmm. it goes hand in hand with me trying to, you know, move people to get out their own way. So right. uh, just really focusing on why people do what they do and, and the decisions and decision making process and how that goes and how the subconscious, you know, kind of influences our reality and all that mm -hmm. stuff. So I stay in those books. Um, and it's been it's it's a it's a it's a quest quite a few of them that <laughs> that have really hit home for me. That's that's been useful and kind of got those wheels turning. Gotcha, gotcha. I I, I totally understand as well. Um, I, I know. Uh, but for me, my, a game changing book for me was The Alchemist uh, by Paulo Coelho and Who Moved My Cheese. Um, oh, uh, I, I read that book. <laughs> yeah. For those that, that was, was a very good. Simple, easy following book, but then when you think about it, I'm like, wow, it's a simple, and it was little, and it was easy read, uh, and, but I it know. made sense. I I'm know. Sorry. Yeah. That's what I, I was had, like, okay. I had my husband, <laughs> and he finished it in, in about a day, and uh, and this is when he was younger, too, so going through that book, I was like, man, it's going to take him a little while. He finished it, and he understood it, and so he, yeah. he understood his capacity, I, he might have been 11 or 12 at the time, but he understood it to his capacity. He's like, yeah, I don't want to be like him and Hall. I need to keep moving. I'm like, I ain't mad at you. Well, right. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and that is, it. that was, I forgot about that book, but yeah, that, that was a good one. That was mm -hmm. a good one. But mm -hmm. there's been, yeah, like I like, I like different people. I like Dale Carnegie. I like um, Michael. So, I didn't know about Michael Singer before, but um, in one of the the YouTube videos, I think I was watching, or it was a masterclass, something, and they had uh -huh. mentioned him, and I was just like, "What?" But that was the time that I was struggling with surrendering, mm -hmm. and it hit the nail on the head. Like his is the the surrender experiment, right? And just reading how he was just now he was he, it was like you know you have different levels and mm -hmm. like on the far far side like moved into the wilderness and did all that stuff you know you ain't gotta do right. that but <laughs> it's just like the point of just being able to just give everything up and being completely empty and mm -hmm. just like, lose me like i'm i'm here i am i'm here and just the that true act of surrender and just 
resisting resistance, right? <laughs> and, and not allowing that to invade your space. So that mm-hmm. was very helpful for, for me. And then um, he also had another one, Untethered Soul. That was good. That was that was like the right. follow up for the surrender experiment. And um, there's just different books that uh, that I read, and it's some of them. I don't. I, I I'm realizing now that because at first it would be like oh, I don't know if I should read this because. I don't, it's not really, you know, some of the stuff, they're not in tune with what I believe exactly. And, you know, they're talking about the universe and they're talking about this, you know, is that the same thing? Is that which, you know, and gosh, oh, you know, if we could just like, sometimes you just got to put that aside and Mm -hmm. just say, you know what, I know what I feel. I know what I believe, but I'm still open. I'm still open and receiving different. And that puts you into a, a mind of like, that's why diversity is so important, right? Mm-hmm. And accepting that and just knowing that people come from different areas and it's okay. It's all right. Mm-hmm. There's different perspectives and just being open to that. You don't have to necessarily agree, but it's great to know what other people are thinking, what other people are struggling with, what other people have found, what other, you know, and, and you maybe you can use some of it, maybe you can't. So mm-hmm. My my world is just open, right? And mm-hmm. I just read different things just to get different perspectives, get different topics, di- different things that I can talk about, different things that I can write about. So mm-hmm. that was one of the things that I, I definitely struggle with. It's just like religion, just it's like, <sighs> but <laughs> they're just saying God, like, what you got? You know, uh, gosh. <laughs> but it's really, I, I don't think it's that. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. But I, I know a lot of people who um, uh, have been um, uh, in the religion uh, and they read or watched the movie The Secret and they didn't agree because they, instead of talking about God or the all uh, the Almighty, they talked about the universe, the universal yeah. or required to give everything to you uh, until, um, you know, uh, I forget who it was. They translated it and said, you know what, the, the information I believe is still valid. Uh, and you can interchange the, the, the word God and universe or whatever, yeah. whatever you need to use for interchangeably to make it applicable for you. And then once uh, once the uh, someone said that to the, the group of people that actually liked the book or the movie, but they didn't want to apply it because it, it wasn't their language. Once they applied their language to it, it, it just started. They were firing on all cylinders and it started to make yes. perfect sense. So I'm like, mm-hmm. don't be afraid to just open yourself up to different things. And just because, I mean, I, 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 we, I have this conversation with my husband frequently. And I mean, because sometimes, it, sometimes it is where when we focus on our religion, it, it sometimes hinders us a little bit where it just mm-hmm. puts us in this little box, right? And we can't, mm-hmm. we can't see or hear anybody else outside of that box because it's wrong, you know? And we'll like, oh no, I don't know what's gonna happen, but <laughs> it's, it's scary. <laughs> like, no, I can't do that. But that's not, that's not true, right? That's not true. And God is, is God, right? I'm a firm believer that there's one God, right? There's one God. Um, but as I read and yes, you may say the universe and maybe you don't want to say God, I don't know. I don't know what it is, but I know that from talking to you and hearing how you've come in contact with the, you know, whatever you're calling him. Right. Mm -hmm. And you have that, you're having that same relationship that I'm trying to get other people to have. Right. Mm -hmm. With, With God. So I don't really care who you're ta- who you say. You can say the universe. You're saying it's somebody outside of yourself mm-hmm. that is helping you along the way. It's not just you. Mm-hmm. So in my mind, that is God. So I'm not gonna say, well, you're not believing it. You know, it is what it is. Like, mm-hmm. okay. So I'm I'm not, I learned to be a little bit more open and just like, okay, well, that's what I need to know. When I talk to you, I'm asking questions. I'm just seeing what your relationship is like and everybody experiences God in a different way, right? Mm -hmm. Nobody's journey is the same. Nobody's path to him is the same. So we all have different ways of coming to him. And if you come to him, then shucks, yes. (laughs) That's what I want to hear. So Uh, 
I'm not concerned about the the names and and what it is because sometimes in in just like we we also I'm gonna say one more thing. Um, we also have this conversation because one of the things that I was I was stunned by, and one of the things that took me aback is just that people would believe in in God and believe in Jesus, right? And and we're we're reading the Bible, we're like, wow, Jesus did amazing things. Jesus did this. Jesus did this. And then I would ask, well, do you think you could do it? No. No, Jesus did. Jesus did that. Jesus was like, I'll be here, you know, and that's not really what I can do. You know, we can we can try to be like Jesus, but we can't we can't do the same thing. I'm just like, mm -hmm. why? Why is that the case? So that's so why I'm like, sometimes it it can hinder you when mm -hmm. really, what do you think Jesus was sent here for? To be an example of what you have the power. He has the same power that we have inside of us. He always referenced his father. He mm -hmm. always prayed. He had that relationship. He showed, he said, I am the way. I know the way. But yeah. he follows me. Like, mm -hmm. do what I'm doing. And you will be able to do this. If you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you can tell this mountain to move from here to he here to here, and it will do it. Like, Constantly, he spoke about faith and you walking in that and the power that you have. But yet we feel like because he's Jesus and because, you know, we're, we're referencing something. And it's just like, oh, he's this person or this this uh, spirit that mm -hmm. we can't touch and we can't beat. We're spirits, too. We're just having an earthly experience. We're, we're in a human body. We came mm -hmm. from we came from God. Like we came from mm -hmm. heaven. Like, I, don't, I don't understand. Why can't we do the same things? So just not allowing religion to limit you, like allow that to influence you, allow that to push you, allow that to motivate you, allow that to breathe life into your situation, but not to where now we're on the comparison thing. And uh -huh. say, well, Jesus never sinned and Jesus was up here. So I can't ever do the things that I couldn't do those miracles. I couldn't walk on, you know, have somebody walk on water. I couldn't do. Yes, you can. Mm -hmm. So. <laughs> That's my spiel. <laughs> and in the process, uh, Jade Gibbons, uh, Gibbons uh, commented back saying that she's on it. Um, yes. So make sure that you tune in um, when she's on the show. It'll be sometime in April. Uh, we haven't selected a date yet. Uh, and and we'll, we're going to check that list out. We're gonna make sure I will. I I'll be in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> All right, perfect. I, I think I think we talked about a lot of wonderful things. I think uh, it was very inspirational, motivational. I, I learned a lot about you. Uh, I think uh, you're gonna uh, de definitely. You you've seen the end game. Uh, continue to have success. To continue to be a motivator. To continue to be positive force in other people's lives. I appreciate everything. Right now, I'm gonna hand the floor over to you. Is there anything that we may have forgotten, or anything that you would like to touch on? Right now, the floor is yours. I think we covered. I think we covered everything. I well, the one thing that I just want people to, and it's not even one, but the things that I want people to really take away from this is, is, is getting my relationship right. Mm -hmm. um, and, and having that clear, clear vision and realizing how important vision is and and what you're doing and and what you may come across and things that may happen in your path or in your journey and just realizing that I am I am going to be here I put on my faith my trust my belief into it and mm -hmm. and I'm trusting that God is going to lead me there and that's just it again it makes you it takes the weight off your shoulders like mm -hmm. when God promised peace that's what he meant <laughs> <laughs> and you're not supposed to be overwhelmed. You're not supposed to be confused. You're not supposed to be frustrated. And if you're feeling those 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 emotions, then guess what? That is God tapping when you on the tapping you on the shoulder and saying, "Hey, let's 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 move back. Let's uh -huh. move back to the place that I I need you to be in." And that's what just using your emotions as that guidepost. And and I mean, God is your GPS. He's going to guide you to where where you need to be, but mm -hmm. your emotions are the signs, right? So, so you got to have both. You got to tune into both of them and just realizing, okay, I'm confused, I'm worried, I'm anxious. Ugh, 
what am I thinking about? Like mm-hmm. what, what what's going on in my head? What are the thoughts that are that are that are streaming through? Because you know we we think <laughs> thousands upon thousands of thoughts a day, and mm-hmm. sometimes we just allow them to run rampant. And just like okay, you can have a home here, even though we don't want them to be here. Uh, but you just being consciously aware of what you're what you're thinking and why you're feeling the way that you are, you're able to guide yourself back to the point that you're supposed to be in. Mm-hmm. So clear vision, relationship, and really honing in and on your emotions and, and your feelings. And I'm telling you, like, it, it makes things so much easier. <laughs> so much easier. There we go. There we go. Well, remember where you guys heard it. Thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, Christina, thank you for coming on the show. Do you know, I do these shows uh, because I put on the put on. And I say that to say this. Let me know how I can help you guys, anyone who's watching or anyone who's watching the replay. Let me know if, if you have a business product or positive message that you're looking for a platform to get that information get that information out on, uh, get a hold of me. Check out the website, uh, inbox me, text me, or subscribe to the website, and, and I get the messages directly to my phone. Let me know if you have a business product or positive message. I will schedule you a time. I'll tell everyone. We'll bring you to the lab. We'll tell everyone to get their pen and their pad, and we're going to have a lot of fun, and we're going to learn about a lot of great things just like we've done today. I want everyone to live their life with the purpose, and I want them to. I want you guys to evolve so hard. I got a special get, gift for you, Christine. I got to get it to you. Uh, I do. I'm a, a, tr- a strong believer um, that if you donate your time, you should be rewarded for it, so this is my uh-huh. reward. I'm going to get this to you. Uh, We'll talk about that momentarily. But I got a special guest coming to the lab next week. Do you know who that guest is? You got to tune in and see. (laughs) (laughs) I like that. (laughs) That, See, got that hook. Got to get that hook back. Yeah. Thank you very much for coming on the show and blessing it. And thank you guys for tuning in. Remember, as your motivational speaker, your empowerment coach, your author, and your favorite baker's favorite baker, Coach Click, coming at you. I want everyone to remain safe, and I want everyone to remain healthy. Have a good night. Peace. Yes. Bye.